Check out this meat. It looks exquisite, right? Nice and browned on the outside, but juicy and rare on the inside. The way a good steak ought to be cooked. Chop it up and fry with some peppers and onions, and you've got yourself some yummy tacos. What if I told you this steak came from a human leg, and the guy whose leg it was chopped it up, cooked it, and fed it to his friends? This is the story of a Redditor named Incredibly Shiny Shart. The man who made tacos out of his own foot. You know what goes great with the taste of human flesh? A nice glass of wine. This video is brought to you by Bright Cellars. As much as I like to drink wine, I don't really know all that much about it. So a lot of times it comes down to pure luck whether or not I get something I really like. What Bright Cellars does is they give you a quick seven question quiz about what kind of tastes you enjoy. And they use this quiz to determine which wines are best for you. The bottles are then shipped straight to your home, saving you the trouble of going to the store and guessing what your will or won't like. And if you don't like any of their picks, they'll send you a replacement in your next box. Each wine comes with a wine education note that'll teach you about tasting notes, the best pairings, the proper serving temperature, and the origins of the wine that they sent you. I got Herzenheim, Mojave Rain, Calypto, Terraform, The Happy Medium, and Petal Press Rosé. Bright Cellars is giving my viewers 50% off their first six bottle box. Just follow the link in my description and take the quiz to get started. Would you dine on human flesh if it were guaranteed that it was safe to eat and that it was ethically sourced? It's a moral question that a lot of people have wrestled with throughout time. Perhaps even more so now with the advent of lab-grown meat. See, me personally, I'm not that sure. I've always been a pretty adventurous eater and I'm kind of curious about it, but at the same time, I watched that movie, We Are What We Are. And this movie, spoiler alert, the cannibal family develops tremors from a disease called Kuru. I'm pretty sure you can only get that from eating brains, but at the same time, the type of hypochondriac that it's like, I think every lump is cancer, so guaranteed if I ate human meat, I'd be like, oh my god, am I shaking? I don't know, I'd probably still eat it though. But regardless of what you or me would do about it, the Redditor Incredibly Shiny Shard had an inside joke with his friends for many years. They'd ask each other if they would try human flesh, if it was ethical and safe, and they were always like, yeah, of course, no questions asked. They didn't even have to think about it. And then one day, such an opportunity would present itself. I was riding down a mountain road on Memorial Day, 45 miles an hour, speed limit, with one truck and one car ahead of me. Ahead of me, a car coming the opposite direction was stopped and indicating they wanted to turn across the road to the fishing area to my right. They stayed stopped in the road as both the car and truck ahead of me passed. It did not move as I approached. I figured they saw me and they were waiting for me to pass. As I approached within 15 feet, they hit the gas and clipped the back of my bike. It locked up and I fishtailed and then flipped into the forest. I sat up and took off my helmet and saw the burning pain that was my foot. Although it remained attached, his foot was absolutely destroyed internally. Doctors were able to save his foot, but they also said that there is no way he was ever going to be able to walk on that foot again. So he was presented with an option. He could either keep the non-working foot or he could have it amputated. And if you remember back to my video about the guy who tried to crowdfund his foot amputation, you'll know that sometimes it's more difficult to live with a non-functioning foot than it is to simply have it removed. And after weighing his options, Incredibly Shiny Shark 2 came to that conclusion. So he opted to have the foot amputated, or actually more like the calf down. He posted the leg pre and post operation, which I can't show you on YouTube, but however, he also did post a picture of his nub signed as proof. And upon getting his foot amputated, he asked the doctor, can I keep it? And in the case of amputations, it seems like people always seem to ask whether or not they can keep the body part. And for what I've seen, sometimes the doctor allows it and sometimes they don't. It's almost kind of arbitrary. I mean, the way I see it, it's your foot. You should be able to do whatever you want with it. And thankfully, Shart's doctor allowed him to keep the foot after signing some paperwork. So he puts it in a cooler and drives home with it. According to an interview he did with Vice, he didn't originally plan to eat it. I got back to my place and I froze it. I couldn't find a taxidermist who would take me seriously, and freeze drying was too expensive. It would have been $1,200 to freeze dry the thing. If I had the money, I would have done it. Eventually, I decided to cast it in plaster to use it as a doorstop, then capture a 3D rendering so I could make little keychains. When we got back to my house, I took the foot out and it was so gross, man. It was covered in blood and had iodine all over it. After I cleaned it off, I was pleasantly surprised by how well preserved it was. 
It's not like they preserved it in formaldehyde or anything. But when you think about beef, which could be dry aged for months, I suppose it makes sense. I had four friends with me at the time, and it was all surreal. We picked it up and we were playing with it. It didn't seem like it was a foot, it just seemed like an object, not a piece of a person. There was no emotional connection. I could think, yep, that's my foot right there, but there wasn't some deep part of me that felt weirded out by it. In fact, that was the weirdest part, was that it wasn't weird. And here's where the gears start turning. He thinks back to that old joke they had about whether or not you would eat human flesh if it was ethical and safe. And he notices that parts of his foot have exposed muscle from the surgery. So he cuts out a big chunk and packs it away before making the plaster cast with the rest of the foot. He starts to call a bunch of his friends to see if they're down. 11 people in total. And out of those 11 people, 10 agree. Not only that, it turns out that one of his friends is dating a professional chef. So he starts talking about his ideas with the chef and eventually they come up with a recipe for foot fajitas. Here's the recipe screenshot if you want to, you know, eat a foot or something, I guess. For some reason, the idea of specifically eating a foot grosses me out. It's like, ew, you, you walk around with that, that's dirty. But then, you know, thinking about that, you gotta take a step back and be like, wait, it, it, once you're in for eating any part of a human being, it's kind of like, why <laughs> you're bogged down in the little details. It came from a person, and while you're eating it, you're looking at him in the eye. In any case, the chef marinates the meat overnight, and they make plans for the whole crew to come over and dine on foot the next day. So you gotta ask, how was it? How was the bitter taste of the feet? Well, one of his friends spit him out into a napkin and then apologized. And as for Incredibly Shiny Shard himself, when asked to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, that is a fantastic question. On this scale, I would give it a solid 6.5, but keep in mind that I have had a lot of good food. So it's way better than a hot dog or a regular burger. Maybe equal with regular bacon, which is pretty decent, but nowhere near as good as butter steered sea scallops or rare sous vide tenderloin seared in grapeseed oil in a cast iron pan. And the next year, in a post in r slash sous vide where he was eating some actual bison, he quipped that perhaps he should have cooked the foot sous vide. Ultimately though, the quality of the meal wasn't really the point. Although I do have to say, some of the pictures make it look really tasty. More so, this was a bonding experience between him and those closest to him. An experience that helped give him closure on his terrible life-changing accident. The outpouring of compassion and empathy I received from my friends and my loved ones really helped me take on the challenge of this big change in my life. So I was taking care of this body part that took care of me for so long. I was paying homage to it and giving it a proper send-off. I have the ashes sitting in a jar on my girlfriend's altar in her living room, and I'll take it to my grave. It's part of me, and this experience is part of me too. Things worked out so damn well afterward. My life has gotten so much better. I left the town I was in and a job of 10 years that was killing me emotionally. I moved to another state. I have a way better job and I enjoy the hell out of it. I've met a woman who I've been with for over a year and a half now and she's the best thing in my life. I'm so much happier now than I could conceive of being before. And it's because of this time where my life was threatened that I persevered through it. Eating my foot was a funny and weird and interesting way to move forward. Anyway, that's all for the story of the Redditor who ate his own foot. Thanks to Alig for suggesting the topic. And if you like this video, you should also check out my video about the man who ate his internet lover. I'm out.